Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. So Ashton Kutcher is said to be concerned about getting dragged into the Diddy criminal case. But sources with direct knowledge of the Diddy investigation says Ashton Kutcher is not being investigated by the feds in Diddy case despite reports. The source says this narrative has got to stop. Ashton has nothing to do with this. Zero involvement. Zero knowledge of Diddy's activities. The source continued. Ashton, like everyone else in Hollywood, attended a Diddy party 20 years ago. You hear this? <laughs> Ashton Kutcher threw a white party with Diddy in 2009. And it made headlines last month when the interview resurfaced. In the 2019 interview, the host, Sean Evans, asked Ashton about Diddy's parties. And he said, I've got a lot I can't tell. So, uh, can't tell that one either. I'm actually cycling through them. Diddy party stories? Man, that was some weird memory lane thing. But, Ashton did, however, elaborate on their bizarre relationship. Check out this clip, you guys. Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. If oh, you really? have one, yeah. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. <laughs> so, um, <sighs> can't tell that one either. I mean, <laughs> I'm like actually cycling through them. Uh, Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. Can't tell that one either. I mean, <laughs> like actually cycling through them. Feel like well, I'm we still have some time to go, you know, I can blow it here. Okay. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Diddy party stories, man. That was like some weird memory lane. Uh, Diddy party stories, they're our Ashton favorite. Ashton and Diddy became friends when Diddy forbid him from pranking him on punk. And Ashton insisted everybody is on the table. And Diddy was like, not me, I'm off the table. So that's what started their conversation. Ashton explained that he and Diddy became fast friends who used to hang out and watch football together. He said uh, Diddy once came over to his house just before he was set to go for a run. He said that Diddy was like, oh, I'll go for a run with you. About halfway through the run, Diddy confessed that he was running out of gas. Ashton then claimed that while surrounded by paparazzi, Diddy asked him to slow down so it wouldn't look like he couldn't finish the run. Ashton said Diddy was so upset over his athletic performance that he decided to run the New York City Marathon that same year. Ashton said so he just started immediately training for the New York City Marathon. Diddy just can't lose. Ashton added, even when Diddy is that close to humility, it becomes a driver. So Diddy has a competitive, jealous spirit. And also sometimes malignant narcissists like Diddy, they'll begin to mirror you. They'll start doing things that you like doing in order to get close to you. And whatever activities that you like doing, they'll start doing it too. Just to get close to you. Because they want something from you. And a lot of times, they want SEX. So they'll do whatever that you're into. Just to, you know, just to get closer and closer. That's how they are. So that's what I think this was. So last year, Ashton Kutcher and his wife, Mila Kunis, were slammed for the letter they wrote supporting convicted R-word Danny Masterson's character. Ashton and Mila came to Danny Masterson's defense in letters written prior to the R-word sentencing. Danny Masterson, Ashton Kutcher, and his wife Mila Kunis, they're all co-stars on that show, the 70s show. And they both pen letters 
describing Danny's so-called positive influence on their lives with hopes that Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Charlene Olmedo would take them into consideration before issuing the 30-year the 30 year sentence. Danny Masterson received life in prison because he all worded three women. You see, me, Ashton and Mila didn't know that these letters were going to be revealed because they were sealed. So that's why they wrote these support letters for a all word, a all worder. Can you believe that? Danny Masterson is Ashton's best friend. They are best friends. And now Ashton is reported saying he absolutely regrets his friendship with Diddy considering what has happened. He feels lied to, betrayed, taken for granted, and manipulated. You believe this? This guy is friends with all worders, okay? These are the type of people he's friends with. But now... He absolutely regrets his friendship with Diddy. But Danny Masterson, the, the convicted all-worder, who's doing life in prison right now, is Ashton's best friend. And Ashton got nerve saying he regrets Diddy's friendship. Because he, and he also said he, he partied with Diddy 20 years ago. And he had no idea that Diddy was into all these things and that he never participated. You believe this mess? So a few days ago, it was reported this insider said that Ashton does have fears about how this investigation will play out. He feels Diddy would have no problem lying to authorities and tossing out some of his famous friends' names if it meant it could get him out of jail. And that Diddy could say anything, do anything, or turn on anyone at this point. Everyone who is close to Diddy fears the possibility of Diddy making up false allegations to clear his own name. Ha! <laughs> you believe this? That is manipulation right there. See, Ashton had this so-called insider put it out there that, oh yeah, Diddy is going to lie on his famous friends just so he could clear his own name. So he tried to get ahead of the case. So if and when Diddy come out and probably expose them, Ashton already conditioned us to believe that Diddy is lying. And he's lying, making up lies on his famous friends just to clear his own name. You see, that's the mind games that they are doing. So for the, for the feds to come out and said they're not investigating Ashton Kutcher, I don't believe that. I think they are saying that because they don't want him to run. Because remember, months ago, when everything came out, the feds came out, Homeland Security came out and said that Diddy is not being investigated, Diddy is not on their radar, and then boom, months later, bang, okay? So this could be the same thing that they are doing with Ashton because he's panicking right now. So that's what I think they are doing. They are trying to let his guard down, right? They're trying to let his guard down so he's not panicking. Because I'm telling you, they are investigating Ashton. There's, there's no way they are not. There's no way they're not. This guy is on tape. He went on a show with his wife, Mila. And then they both were talking about how Danny Masterson, the convicted all-worder, had a bet with Ashton who would kiss Mila, like tongue kiss her first. And she was 16 on that show. And you want to know what's crazy? After the backlash for pinning the support letter for Danny, the all-witter, 
he, Ashton Kutcher, resigned from Dawn, the anti-SEX trafficking organization he helped create in 2009. How crazy is that? That's why I keep saying the very thing that they are into, that they are involved in, is the same organization that they create or they support. It's sick. It's sick. This guy is best friends with Diddy, who's been indicted and arrested for SEX trafficking. And <laughs> Ashton Kutcher stepped down from his own organization, anti-SEX trafficking organization that he helped create in 2009. You just can't make this up. These people are sick. That's why I say, do not believe these charities that they support, that they founded, this organization that they run is BS. So meanwhile, prominent Houston, Texas lawyer, Tony Busby is representing 120 victims in lawsuits against Diddy. He says, one of his new clients was only nine years old when he was allegedly touched by Diddy at his bad boy offices. When we talk about the ages of the victims, when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Busby said at a press conference, he said our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. Tony Busby indicated some of the names that will be defendants alongside Diddy and the forthcoming lawsuits will shock you. It won't shock me. It's going to shock everyone else, but not me. Because I know about the industry. I know so much. So nothing shocks me with these people, okay? And I'm just so glad, finally, they are focusing on the kids because they are very hush-hush about the sexual abuse with kids in the industry. I mean, they're saying, you know, one nine-year-old, one 14, one 15, and so forth and so forth. But no, it's way more than that. It's way more way more nails that's not being reported. So that's why I'm so happy. Finally, I've been like waiting for this because it's like, yeah, they focus on the adults, but no, it's so much worse. It's so much uglier. It's so much sickening. If they were to really, really expose the dark side of the music, entertainment, acting, industry, you would hate these people. You would hate them. And I believe soon, when everything be, get exposed, not just with Diddy, just, you know, just Hollywood, because Babylon is falling. Babylon is falling. Yes. You're going to hate these people because of the crimes they've done to these young kids. <laughs> so yeah I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad but it's way more and way worse than was going to be reported but still at least they allowed this to come out you know it's about time because these kids need justice women men of all ages need justice, but these kids, these innocent kids, oh, my heart ache, my heart aches. Oh, yeah. Um, Let me see what else. I think that is all. Yeah, so Ashton Kutcher, I believe they are saying that he's not being investigated, so he doesn't run or whatever, but I do believe he is being investigated. Because they are saying they are big, big Hollywood names. Big, big names, bigger than Diddy that they have tapes on. 
that they will reveal. Huge names. People who are bigger, more well-known than Diddy. Okay? So, check out this clip, you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point to pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. You should know, in this group, it is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females. When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. Now, although most of the victims who have stepped forward were victimized after 2015, this has been going on for a very long time. The acts complained of in these cases that we're going to file occurred primarily in New York, either Manhattan or the Hamptons, or occurred in California, primarily in Los Angeles, or in Florida, primarily in Miami. Most of these events and incidents occurred at parties, typically after parties, or album release parties, New Year's Eve parties, Fourth of July parties, something they called a puppy party, the all-white party, although several of these events occurred at auditions. Uh, many times, uh, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry were, were coerced into this type of conduct uh, in the promise of being made a star or in the promise of, of having um, Sean Combs listen to their tape or even let them read for Sean Combs. There's been a lot of reports that we're filing a class action. This is not a class action. Class action is when one or two people file a case on behalf of a group of people. That's not this. These cases will be individual cases. Each case will live and die on its own merit. These cases will be filed individually, one plaintiff against whoever the defendants were involved in the case. Each case may be filed in one venue like California, another case may be filed in New York. One case may sue just Sean Combs, but multiple other people. One case may sue a range of people. I would expect most though to be filed, as I said, in New York and Los Angeles. Now I know this, many of you came here thinking or hoping or perhaps uh, believing that I may start naming names. Well, that day will come, but it won't be today. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. Um, it's a long list already. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but because of the nature of this case, we're gonna make damn sure, damn sure that we're right before we do that. Uh, but the names that we're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. They already know who they are. The claims we intend to bring will include the following. Violent sexual assault or rape, sexual abuse, facilitated sex with a controlled substance, false imprisonment, compelling prostitution, sexual misconduct, dissemination of video recordings, false imprisonment, sexual abuse of minors. Given the large volume of cases and given our other docket obligations and given the fact that we want to be sure when we file these cases that they are fully vetted. I expect we'll start filing these cases against Sean Combs and other perpetrators within the next 30 days.